all right so hello hello everyone welcome if you are new to the channel welcome back if you love me i love you too um allergies have well they've been beating me in the face <laughs> and it shows so um my allergies are definitely keeping me off camera but i felt guided to do a reading and i'm gonna try and keep it quick because this message is really really clear so if it's not your message it's not your message um, and that's fine. Maybe another one will be, but someone obviously needed this one. Um, I did roll the astro dice. So Libra is the significant sign. There's also the moon out here. So you may have a Libra moon or it may also be Cancerian energy. And then we also have the sixth house, which can also be Virgo. So Virgo, Cancer, Libra, moon placement, sixth house, anything in regards to those might be significant. The moon could also also be Lilith or Celine and the nodes. Okay. You might have nodes in, in those houses. Um, I also pulled some pineapple charming charms to get real specific for some of you. So we've got a snow globe, a soccer ball, a deer, a purple crown, a caduceus, and two letter K's, pink and white. So it could be female, strong, masculine energy. But I definitely got two K's. So initials are definitely K. Um, or they just might be like KK all the time, right? Instead of saying OK, maybe they just put double K's. Who knows? It'll be significant for you if it resonates with you. I also got three of my micro playing cards. I got the Ten of Spades, the Six of Spades, and the Four of Hearts. Um, the Ten of Spades is the Ten of Swords. That's its tarot equivalent. Six of Spades, Six of Swords, right? And then the Four of Hearts is the Four of Cups. So with these three cards, I think that there is some kind of betrayal or sabotage that is moving things forward um, into what is essentially or at least potentially a missed opportunity to love the self, which is what the Four of Cups is to me. It's the universe giving you a choice and an opportunity to love yourself or stay focused on outside circumstances or third party people and not wanting it to go away. And you miss the opportunity to love yourself, right? Which is why the Five of Cups, the regret and the grief set in because the universe is presenting you that option for a reason, right? To avoid the five of cups energy. So with that tops and bottoms of the deck, I used my pathfinder Harrow cards, which is uh, D and D right. Dungeons and dragons cards, but they work really, really well <laughs> for uh, card reads. So I was guided to those and tops and bottoms. We got the forge on top and the midwife on bottom we also got with the rider weight the two of wands on top and judgment on bottom and peaking the magician and the empress were under that so strong scorpio gemini uh, or virgo and taurus or libra in energy right so we have virgo twice now and libra twice now Right, because the sixth house is Virgo and Libra is Empress, right? Because it's Venusian energy and Mercurial energy. I'm feeling like ultimately whatever call was made, um, someone definitely chose pregnancy. All right, I'm seeing that super clear here especially with the midwife card and especially with the judgment card um, manifesting with the magician the empress that could definitely be someone choosing to get pregnant and it's really really how I'm reading it now I feel with the two of wands that they're still this moment of pause or deciding whether or not they want to move forward. Okay. Um, I feel like whoever, I feel like whoever this is, 
they haven't, like, if they, if they're choosing to get pregnant, they haven't actually gotten pregnant yet, because the midwife indicates someone who cannot create life on her own, okay? She is someone who brings life into the world, but she can't create it on her own. And so I feel like someone has made the choice to get pregnant, but they haven't actually gotten pregnant yet. Okay, which is why this reading is coming through right now for whoever needs it, right? Um, the Forge, right? We're, we were talking about the Forge. It goes with that midwife card on, on the top of the deck. And it represents the blacksmith. It usually indicates a event that needs many sources of strength to overcome. Um, it, it technically uses the word dangerous events, but because we're not in d and I don't feel like it's, it's super, super dangerous. Um, but it could definitely be life-changing, right? I think that that is what you're up against right now, especially because I'm going to get into the, the two people here. Um, and the cyclone is, is dead ass serious and, and literally being a cyclone, but I'll get there. I feel like whoever connected with this energy, the wanderer, right? Connected with the cyclone. I think that the wanderer may in fact be the male, in this situation, you could take genders how it resonates for you, but I'm going to read it like I see it, okay? I feel like the wanderer, the wanderer is definitely the male or the person who's being divinely led. I think that they're the one that is obviously not in poverty with the five of coins in reverse. I think they're the anti-poverty energy. Um, and I think that they're very physically attracted to whoever the cyclone is. There's a definite physical attraction there or chemistry or a weird, you know, I'm drawn to this person type thing, which, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that those feelings come because the wound is familiar and it's been suppressed and it's trying to come up to the surface to heal, right? We are attracted to what is toxic and familiar. And the cyclone is nothing short of completely toxic. Because the wanderer comes out with the real diamond. And is tech literally described as someone who collects trash that other people have discarded, right? They see the treasure in discarded trash. So the wanderer is looking at the cyclone as a real diamond, right? The wanderer is a real diamond energy, genuine energy looking at the cyclone, which is broken and reckless, right? Those are the shadow cards that came out. They're looking at this person who is wildly insecure, and very immature, right? With the page of wands sideways, they have their moments of childlike excitement, but they're also prone to tantrum and very unpredictably moody, right? The cyclone literally destroys everything it touches. That's what it does. It tears things apart. That is the definition in the book. It tears things apart. It's a cyclone. Okay. And they're typically conjured up, right, by the intelligence of other people, right, that are bringing them into the manifestation, which, you know, this has a lot to do with the past that this person has been through. But the cyclone signifies, you know, war, arson, or other plans to destroy everything they touch, quote unquote, right, in the deck. It's a chaotic, evil energy. It's a very unpredictable, malaligned energy. Comes out with the tower and the page of pentacles, uh, clarifying that page of wands. This person may be having an epiphany about what they can grow with the wanderer, okay, seizing an opportunity, 
which is the the page of pentacles right seizing an opportunity like a seed was planted in the mind right this is what i can create and it's a tower it's an epiphany type energy the tower is not always negative but it's it can represent an epiphany that changes everything i think the cyclone sees how beautiful the energy of the wanderer is and that the wanderer is looking to turn the trash to treasure um and that the cyclone is most definitely seizing that opportunity and already plans on getting pregnant like that's the solution to keep the wanderer who is not in poverty right their energy is not in poverty um they're gonna try and trap the wanderer Okay, they're going to try and trap the Wanderer. Now, the top and bottom of the energy alignment deck, that's um, the deck of my own creation, right? I have uh, just a couple left in my Etsy shop, um, if you're interested. But the top of the deck was sympathetically understanding, and the bottom was disenchanted, right? The shadow on the bottom of the deck was disenchanted. And I feel like whoever this cyclone is, I think the wanderer is sympathetic to what they've been through and understands where their energy is at. It can read their energy. It sees that they need to be filled up, right? Because they've been depleted or destroyed by life's experience, right? But the cyclone truly is disenchanted. They don't believe in love. They don't believe that it lasts forever. And so they are reckless, right? They're broken and they are reckless. And so in order to keep something as long as possible, they're, the only solution that they logically concluded was pregnancy. Okay, we've got double pages there. This person... I feel like this is a message coming through as a wake-up call for whoever the wanderer is. Now, it is a centaur, which can definitely be Sagittarian energy, but it can most definitely be Chiron energy. So if you have Chiron in Cancer, because it's clarified by the Chariot card, or you have Mars and Aries energy with the Knight of Wands, that's Mars and Aries to me. Or if you have some kind of... Um, hidden Taurian energy you could have Taurus uh in the 12th house you could have Taurus in the sixth house but it's some kind of or you can even have Taurus on the IC line right between the third and fourth house I feel like there's some kind of wound with Chiron that is drawing you to this person. And if you have Chiron in Cancer, then you're probably going to end up having children with a very, very, very troubled person. This might already have been a pattern in your life. If you already have kids with a very troubled person, right? This is someone who is psychologically troubled. They probably need a lot of counseling and counseling may not truly help them or correct the false perception that they have of people, right? There's been a lot of damage done. I don't think there's any amount of love or valuing that you, the individual, could give this person to heal them and bring happiness into their life. That's a choice that they have to make and they can't make it in the state that they're in. The broken, reckless state they're in is in survival mode. How can I benefit from this? How can I make it work for me in the long term? How do I not lose it when they realize how damaged I am? And they, and you might already realize how damaged they are, but I don't think you know the, to what extent. I really don't think you know to what extent. So you know, take it, take it how it resonates for you. This is definitely a reading that I feel is like a warning to a man. Okay. And there is someone who is very magnetic for you, but that is truly toxic for you. And you have to ask yourself why you're drawn to someone like this. What is it about yourself that feels 
the need to be validated by such a person or the need to come in and be the savior, right? To be the one who's, who gets the credit, right? That you saved this person and you were able to help this person so that you feel full. What is it about you that doesn't feel full that you want to martyr yourself for someone else and to no avail at that, right? Because this is definitely a warning. This is a dangerous a dangerous energy that you're dealing with. It literally tears apart everything it touches. And you can listen to what I'm saying and think that, no, you know better. And I'm telling you right now, no, you fucking don't. No, you fucking don't. And I would definitely think twice. I would think three times, four times, five times until you realize that going after said person is probably not a good idea. And that you should probably raise your standards and let that person heal however it is they need to heal. And it's not your job. It's not your job. With the caduceus out here as a pineapple charm too, there could be serious health risks involved like STDs with this person. Because you might not be the only person that they're having intimacy with. I would really watch. Because if you're not broken and you're not disenchanted by love and life yet uh after dealing with the cyclone you will be you will be you will never be the same you will never be the same the cyclone will run through your fucking energy and you will never you will never be able to rebuild yourself the same so take a moment of pause right two of wands take a moment of pause and make that judgment call to potentially manifest better in your life Because right now with that four of hearts, that four of cups, you're being given an opportunity to love yourself. Because this betrayal is going to come in and move forward. And if you're you're not paying attention, you're going to miss this opportunity to love yourself. Something is pinging off inside of you that is giving you like danger red flags about this person. And you're trying to convince yourself that you are strong enough to handle it. That you're good enough to handle it. And that's the wrong thinking. Just because you're good and you're strong doesn't mean it is required of you to take on projects. This person is a project with pieces covered in grease just slipping through your fingers. You're never going to put this thing back together on your own. You're not. Life's going to have to help this person in a way that they, they choose when they choose to heal. What they're choosing right now is not to heal. What they're choosing right now is to use you, to use you and destroy you if they have to. They don't care. They don't actually care. They could be extremely charming. That page of wands, that innocent charm is there. But they're seizing an opportunity. And I think they're going to blindside you. So whoever needed that, Um, I hope it saves you decades. I hope it saves you decades of lost energy because cyclones, they're energy vampires and you'll wish you never met them. You'll wish you never fucking met them. Don't hate yourself. Not this life. Not this life. Okay. I'll catch you next time.